This video is going to be covering a bunch of weird US landmarks. We got stuff like Big Cow, Bridge Trolls, and Big KFC Chicken, which is my personal favorite. I'm trying to hit a thousand subscribers by the end of the year. I could really use some help, but other than that, I really hope y'all enjoy the video. The Corn Palace. I'm assuming this is just like Mecca for everyone in South Dakota where it's located because it's truly just beautiful. It's a big venue for sports events, concerts, exhibits, and other community events with a capacity of 3,200, and I really need to see City Morgue perform here. The building was originally known as the Corn Belt Exposition and constructed in 1892 in an attempt to showcase the state's rich soil and encourage settlers to make the nearby area their home. In 1905, the city of Pierre tried to become the new state capital with its attraction as the reasoning behind it. Now hold on, even weirder than that, in 2007 it got a bunch of media attention as it started receiving funding from the Department of Homeland Security. They got $25,000 in order to install a new camera system to be used when President Barack Obama would visit the Corn Palace. Definitely what won him the election, and also forgot to mention, check out their corn mascot, Cornelius. Get it? Cause like corn? Dog Bark Park Inn. At first I thought this would be like a hotel for dogs type of place to stay, but no, it's a big ass wooden beagle bed and breakfast. This is genuinely blowing my mind right now, so I'll just read out part of a review left about the inn. Idaho's beagle shaped guest house is as comfortable as it is unique. Being in this dog house is certainly a good thing. I promise to find a way to somehow spend a night inside this beagle at some point, cause this is my mecca. Spoonbridge and Cherry. This is honestly just a true piece of art. It's located in Minneapolis Sculpture Garden. Uh, to put it simply, it's a really big 52 foot long spoon with a big cherry sitting at the end, and it's also a water fountain. It was commissioned in the 1980s for $500,000 and is now, quote, the unofficial symbol of Minneapolis. I'm not sure if that's true, but I'm pretty sure Minneapolis also isn't a real place, so I wouldn't trust my opinion too much. The Donut Hole. This is a donut shop in La Puente, California that was built in 1968. What makes it so special is the giant donuts on each end of the building that allow you to drive inside them like a donut tunnel to get your food. There's not really much else I can say about this one, it's just like a big ass donut. The KFC Big Chicken. This is the first one that I've actually driven by and seen multiple times, and it's just this big ass KFC chicken with a moving beak that opens and closes. The chicken itself is a horrifying 56 feet tall, and it was constructed in 1956. In 1993, it was severely damaged by storm winds, and KFC was forced by public outcry insisting that the building be restored to its former glory. A part of the people asking for its repair was surprisingly pilots who used it as a reference landmark when approaching to land at the Atlanta airport and a nearby military base. Pieces of the original structure before being damaged were sold as souvenirs to collectors after this incident, which is crazy. Alongside being the most recognized landmark in Marietta, Georgia, it was included as a promotional card for the SimCity trading card game. I promise y'all, if this video gets 100 likes, I'll buy the card, and there's only 6 left in stock, so y'all should. Ben and Jerry's Flavor Graveyard. This is pretty much what it sounds like, it's a graveyard except the headstones are for various discontinued Ben and Jerry's ice cream flavors. The site was used for the Dearly Depinted ad campaign in which customers could go onto their website for the flavor graveyard and vote for their favorite flavor to be resurrected from the dead. Its origins however date back to 1997 when the graveyard was started with just 4 flavors. Sadly 35 more flavors joined them there in the future. It's located outside the company's ice cream factory in Waterbury, Vermont. Yet again fooled by big ice cream though, in the video it shows a little ice cream pint casket but in reality there's nothing buried under the headstones in the graveyard like they'd have us to believe. Carhenge. I'm not sure if this is like cultural appropriation or not, but come on, it's kinda cool though. It's a replica of the original Stonehenge, but in Nebraska and made out of a bunch of old cars covered in gray spray paint. The site also expanded to the Car Art Reserve and includes the other automobile sculptures. I guess it's kind of a big deal in Nebraska as in 2017, 4,000 people, including the state's mayor Pete Ricketts, gathered at Carhenge to watch the solar eclipse. There's also a whole documentary on this place if you want to learn more about it. The world's largest peanut is actually what inspired me to make this video as I've been to South Georgia before and coming from someone who lives in northern half of Georgia, those people are genuinely insane, especially for peanuts. However, when you google the world's largest peanut, most of the results are about a 6 foot long peanut in Durant, Oklahoma. But while it may have been the biggest when it was first unveiled, there is a long history of competition for the world's largest peanut. Right now, the world's largest peanut is located in Ashburn, Georgia. Largest ball of twine. I'm starting to realize a lot of these are just in the Midwest, I guess because there's not much else to do out there, but yeah, this one is in Cocker City, Kansas. The city built the ball its own gazebo over where it stays, and every August they host a twine-a-thon, where even more twine is added onto the ball. The last time anyone was even able to weigh the ball, it came up to just shy of 20,000 pounds, along with a circumference of 40 feet. 
Turquoise McDonald's. This is a McDonald's in Sedona, Arizona that's one of a kind due to all of its golden arches being the color turquoise. The city is also known for its large red rock mountains, which plays into the color change for this specific franchise location. The town likes to maintain a consistent color scheme that will blend in well with the red mountains, so when the McDonald's was built there, officials claimed that the golden arches wouldn't work well with the other scenery and insisted that it be this shade of blue. Other than that, it's just a normal McDonald's. Basket Building. This is a 7 story, 180,000 square foot building made to be the Longaberger Company headquarters. The architecture was inspired by the company's similar looking best selling basket. Sadly, they stopped paying property taxes on the building in 2014 and it was sold for 1.2 million. The new owners haven't done much with the property other than a tour in 2016. It's now on the market for 6.5 million, so if each one of my 360 subscribers donate 18k, it can be ours. Bull Weevil Monument. This is just a whole ass monument to the bull weevil as it's held in the air by a statue of Liberty looking lady in Enterprise, Alabama. At the bottom of this 13 foot tall monument, it reads, in profound appreciation of the bull weevil and what it has done is the herald of prosperity. This monument was erected by the citizens of Enterprise, Coffee County, Alabama. The story behind this area's appreciation for the bull weevil dates back to 1918 when the bug moved from Mexico to Alabama and helped farmers convert the poorly performing cotton fields into prosperous peanut fields. However, the people of Enterprise, Alabama are all living a lie. In 1998, vandals tore the bull weevil part of the statue off to keep for themselves, and the city was going to repair it to its original state, but opted to make a polymer resin replica of the weevil instead. So if by any chance whoever stole that weevil is out there watching this video, you need to turn yourself in because this is just, this is too far. Florence, y'all. This is a water tower for the Kentucky town of Florence. However, it wasn't always like this. When first unveiled in 1975, the tower read Florence Mall as a way to welcome newcomers to the city. This was changed due to legal concerns because the Florence Mall wasn't open yet, so they technically couldn't advertise it, and the Kentucky State Transportation Cabinet told the town's mayor, Hop Ewing, to have it changed. But the town didn't have the funds to pay the fine or get someone to fully repaint it, so they paid a local painter $500 to repaint the N into a Y, making it Florence, y'all. Unexpected to the mayor, though, this ended up becoming a staple of the town and a sort of slogan for the city, to the point of their baseball team even being named the Florence Yalls. World's second largest fork. It really does break my heart that we can't be home to the world's largest fork in America, but regardless of this, the fork is still very impressive. It's located in Springfield, Missouri, and stands 35 feet tall next to a three-story building, which just shows how big this thing is. It was originally made in 1998 to stand in front of a restaurant nearby, but after the store shut down, the ad agency repossessed it and got the fork to put it in front of their main office building. Oh, and the largest fork in the world is actually in Switzerland, but that's not important. Lucy the Elephant. This is just a massive elephant, like I mean six story tall elephant that's in Margate City, New Jersey. Of course it's New Jersey. What really surprised me is that it was originally constructed in 1881. The guy who made it was even given a patent for making and selling animal shaped buildings for 17 years after getting it in 1881. The use of the building has changed over the years, having been a restaurant, business office, cottage, and tavern, which was shut down in prohibition. This thing is just actually that old. In 1969, the building had fallen into disrepair and was scheduled for demolition, but a group of passionate at Margate citizens formed the Save Lucy Committee. They eventually raised enough money to have Lucy refurbished in 1970. Lucy has been through so much in its 140 years, even being struck by lightning on the tusks. But through all this, it's claimed the spot of being the oldest surviving roadside tourist attraction in America. Mutter Museum. To put it simply, this is just a museum full of a bunch of skulls, bones, and other body parts located in Philadelphia. The purpose of the collection donated by Dr. Thomas Dent Mutter in 1858 was for biomedical research and education. What I find really interesting about this place is that they have Einstein's brain permanently on display there for anyone to see. This is also, I'm pretty sure, the inspiration for the museum that dude sold bodies to in the freak show season of American Horror Story, which I made a whole iceberg on that if you want to go check it out. Benawal Milk Bottle. This is a really big milk bottle located in Spokane, Washington. It was built in 1935 by Paul E. Newport, the owner of Benawa Dairy Company. And there were actually two of the milk bottle buildings in the area, but only one is left standing today. Since there's not really a lot of history to these milk bottle buildings, I'll read you an ad that was supposed to be about the milk bottle. Designed to build better men and women by making dairy products attractive to boys and girls. No expense will be spared to make these new stores as sturdy, as fine, and as good as the products they represent. Astoria Column this 125 foot tall column in Astoria, Oregon was built in 1926 in the city park and overlooks the mouth of the Columbia River. It also has a 164 step spiral staircase that leads up to an observation deck at the top, so sort of like a lighthouse, but just not near the ocean. It was built by the Great Northern Railway Company in Vincent Astor to commemorate the city. It got its design from the Trajan Column in Rome. 
Fremont Troll. When I heard about this landmark, I didn't think it would be so horrifying, but look at that. It's a big ass troll sculpture under the George Washington Memorial Bridge in Seattle, Washington. In his hand, he's grasping a Volkswagen Beetle that looks like he just snatched it off the road, and it used to have a time capsule inside the car, but that was stolen at some point when the sculpture was vandalized. In 1990, the Fremont Arts Council wanted to rehabilitate the area under the bridge that was mostly inhabited by drug dealers at the time, so they held a competition to see, you know, whose art would be displayed. But it's the fucking Fremont Troll, which honestly just makes this place even scarier. The Petroid. I didn't realize how many roadside attractions were also working water showers, but yeah, this one is just a big ass peach. Surprisingly, it's in Gaffney, South Carolina, so not Georgia, and can hold up to a million gallons of water. The crazy thing is that South Carolina and at one point Cherokee County alone, where this water tower is at, produces more peaches annually than Georgia does, even if we're known as the peach state. This is actually why the Gaffney Board of Public Works commissioned the peach water tower to make sure everyone knows that they got more peaches there in South Carolina. Spam Museum. This museum was made in celebration for Hormel Foods, the company that makes Spam, this pre-cooked canned meat, and their 100 year anniversary as a company. It was opened in 1991 in Austin, Minnesota, and nowadays it includes historical displays, family activities, games, a gift shop, and even a theater that shows the short film Spam, a love story. The most eye-catching display is Can Central, where visitors learn about advertisements for the food and different recipes they used over the years. The Field of Corn is an art installation in Dublin, Ohio, that's meant to remind visitors of the city of their agricultural history. They definitely get the idea across to whoever comes across this thing, because it's an attraction that has 109 concrete ears of corn all standing up in a row on fields. There's also a plaque that explains corn hybridization as the man who used to farm on that land, Sam France, invented several hybrid corn species. Layla's Hair Museum. This is a museum in Independence, Missouri that has a bunch of art made from hair, pretty much. Hair art was started around the 16th century and gained more traction in the Victorian era. The museum's collection has over 600 hair wreaths and 200 pieces of hair jewelry. They also have hair from Elvis Presley, Abraham Lincoln, George Washington, and Queen Victoria, even though I'm not really sure how you get your hands on something like that, but go off, I guess. The sad thing is, the museum's now permanently closed, so unless Layla decides to open something up again with her collection, we'll never get to see this great work in person. Big Butter Jesus, formerly known as the King of Kings statue, was a 62 foot tall statue of Jesus that sat in front of a megachurch in Monroe, Ohio. Notice that I said was, and yeah, he got hit by lightning and burnt into disrepair in 2010. Which like, if God's real, I'm not sure what that's even supposed to mean. It was also first constructed in 2004 for around $250,000 and was put together in Jacksonville, Florida, so there was at some point a Big Butter Jesus just going down I-75. Frog Bridge. Just gonna warn you, this isn't actually a bridge made of frogs, but it's a bridge that goes across the Willimantic River in Connecticut that has four big copper frogs atop poles on the bridge. This one actually has a crazy meaning behind it, so in 1754 there was this thing called the Battle of the Frogs where for some reason thousands of bullfrogs woke up about a mile east of the city center and all began croaking which the residents of the town mistook for war drums and then went into panic thinking that either the French or Native Americans were attacking them. The bridge itself was built in 1857 then refurbished in 1986 and an unnamed architect a part of the city planning board decided it should also have the frogs on them due to the past battle of the frogs in their town. Also if you were wondering the four Frog's names are Manny, Willie, Windy, and Swifty. The world's largest pistachio is in New Mexico to complement the whole pistachio land there too. The nut is 30 feet tall and it took 35 gallons of paint just to get it finished. The purpose of the big ass nut is to draw people into pistachio land, which has the pistachio tree ranch and a gift shop full of almond based products. They have stuff like chili chocolate pistachio brittle and homemade pistachio milkshakes. Blue Whale of Catoosa. This is a really big blue whale poking out of the river in Catoosa, Oklahoma. The dude who made it must have really fucked up and got put in the dog's house, not the bed and breakfast, because in 1970, he made this as a surprise anniversary gift to his wife who collects whale figurines. I mean, this is the most obvious next step in whale collecting, but go off, I guess. I hope y'all enjoyed the video. If you did, maybe leave a like so more people could see it. I really would appreciate that, and uh, have a great rest of your day.